In today's video, we are obviously going to be breeding a ton of these beautiful danios that I have here in this aquarium. About three days ago, I went to the local fish store, I actually went to Paul's Aquariums here in Brisbane, and I picked up two different types of danios. I picked up some beautiful golden danios, and I also picked up some long fed leopard danios. Like I said, I only picked these guys up three days ago, and we're going to be trying to breed them today using the bare minimum materials that you will pretty much need for any kind of egg scattering breeding project in the hobby. I've tried to make this as simple as possible and give you guys a bunch of different ideas for you to use at home. What we're going to be doing is taking each of these fish, so the golden danios and the leopard danios, separating them out, putting them into two separate boxes to show you the two different methods of breeding them. Breeding them tonight, well technically in the morning tomorrow, and hatching out the eggs and raising the fry. Now, to do this project, it's going to be so easy. You're going to be able to do this with pretty much anything you have at home. All you'll need to buy is the fish and to put in a little bit of effort. Other than that, I'm going to try and show you guys exactly how to do this. What are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Okay, so what you're looking at over here is basically everything you're going to need to do this project. So we've got two of these styrofoam containers set up. I'd say about eight liters each, doesn't really matter. These are a very small, like medium size, so you'll get these from like trash or I mean even vegetable people might have them, like people who get vegetables in the morning. Ask them for a styrofoam container. If you can't find one of these, I'll be very surprised. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing two different methods. So the first method here, what you can see I've done is I've taken one of these baskets. So these are used for ponds and stuff like that to grow lilies in, but these are a great spawning medium for producing danios because what you can see is there's all these little gaps down the bottom where the danios can spawn and the eggs are going to fall through. That means that the danios can't predate on their eggs because these fish are going to try their best to try and eat all of their eggs. So what we've got to do is make sure when they do spawn they can't access their eggs. So what I've done to do this setup is I've simply got some nails screwed in the side here. There's definitely a better way to do this, but this is just trying to do it with like the bare minimum stuff. These nails are screwed in the side, they just fit underneath the lip here of the breeder box or I guess the net or whatever we're going to call it, the crate and it just suspends it up here. So what we're going to do is throw our danios in here, they're going to spawn tomorrow morning and then we'll take the danios out, take this out and we'll raise a fry in here. If you don't want to get this breeder box, you're too lazy to do that or you can't find one or something like that, what we've got over here is another method that a lot of other breeders like to use. So what we have in here are just a ton of different pebbles, they're about yay big and I've just thrown them throughout this container. As you can see, you can also use marbles. Now these aren't gonna work the best. I think we're gonna get much more eggs from the crate method, but what's gonna happen is they're gonna spawn in here and the eggs are gonna fall in all these little gaps within the rocks and the fish are not gonna be able to eat them. So I think what we're gonna do is in this container, we're gonna do the long fin leopards. And in this container, we're gonna do the golden danios. Okay, so if we come over here, you can see just how beautiful some of these fish are. These are a great beginner species, and if you're new to breeding fish, these are going to be a great one to kind of divert you from breeding your guppies and stuff that's pretty easy to breed. These guys are super easy to breed, but they are an egg scatterer. So if you're looking into getting to breeding some like egg scattering fish, these are going to be a great starting point for you. The way these guys breed is you introduce males and females together, you leave them for the afternoon, and then the next morning when the lights come on, they will breed. So what you have to do is get your females nice and plump. What I've been doing is feeding them a ton of live baby brine shrimp and lots of live blackworms. Now, you definitely do not need to do this. These guys will condition themselves on just your high protein flakes or just your standard tropical flakes. But if you do add these foods, you will get a lot more eggs in my opinion. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have males and females. So I always recommend a ratio of two males to one female, as it's more important that you get your males wanting to spawn than your females and your males are going to be the ones that guide your females towards the moss and get them to release their eggs. I'd recommend getting four males and two females. The way you sex them is very, very easy. The males are going to be a lot more smaller than the females and not as fat. Females are going to be very, very plump and it's quite easy to see when you compare the two side by side. So what I'm going to do is take all of our fish out of this aquarium, introduce them into their breeding containers. It's currently like 12 p.m. and I want these guys to spawn tomorrow. So. This will give them plenty of time to settle into their new environment and get ready to start breeding. I'm expecting to get about a hundred of each fish from each spawn. We'll see how they go, whether they're even fertile or whether I run into any issues. But like I said, I've really never had trouble breeding these fish and they are a really good species to start with if you do want to get into breeding. If you want to breed your zebra danios, these guys are going to be the exact same. 
And the reason I didn't go for the Zebra Danios is because these guys are a little bit more cool and different to the Zebra Danio. I've done the Zebra Danios before and I just wanted to do something a little bit more different. What I'm going to do is go ahead, separate these guys out, put them in their containers and I'll show you guys exactly how to set the containers up to have maximum success. So one other thing that I think is really important that you could probably get away without doing, but I always like to do is add like some kind of spawning medium. So what I like to use for a lot of these projects is just like this cocoa peat. It's really easy to find. And the reason I like to use it is because normally it doesn't have any planaria or anything on it, which you're going to predate on your eggs. So it's a really sanitary way of having a spawning medium. It's super cheap. So what I'm going to do is just break up a bunch of this stuff. I'm probably only going to need about this much for our project in this one. So we'll just put that in the corner over there and Daniels will go and run through that and spawn in that. And then for this one, we're just gonna kind of like throw it everywhere because it doesn't really matter where it is in here, they're not gonna care. And the other thing too is you really wanna like disperse your rocks out and make sure that there's not really anywhere that the Daniels can get underneath and try and eat these eggs. So you can see they're pretty well spread out there. Now I think that's good. The other thing too is it doesn't need to be deep. You can see it's pretty shallow. I'd say this is about two or three inches of water, and this is about four inches of water. I've just used aged tank water. That's probably the best thing to use. You can use tap water and condition it. To me, it's just easier to use old water. And the other thing too is you're not gonna wanna keep your fish in here for ages. Like, I would never recommend keeping fish in styrofoam boxes because I think the styrofoam over time is just gonna leach a bunch of chemicals into the water that aren't gonna be great for your fish. So in here, we're gonna have like little pieces of styrofoam Make sure there's none of those floating on the top of your water because what can happen is your danios will try and eat that and they'll just end up ruining your danios and killing them because they're just going to make them float. There's our two setups. Now we'll go ahead and add the fish. So for this first container we have these beautiful longfin leopards. You can see them there. Fantastic fish. So we'll go ahead and add them. In you guys go. So there they are, getting all comfortable, finding their new surroundings. And then we'll go ahead and add these golden danios. Look how good these look. They're gonna look so good in this black container. So we'll go ahead and add these dudes. There they go. Now that's literally it for setting up the breeding tanks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these guys for the rest of the afternoon. And then tomorrow morning we'll come in about an hour and a half after the lights have turned on. And we'll see whether we have any eggs. So one thing you're gonna to need to do as well is these guys are jumpers. You're gonna need a lid. Luckily these styrofoam boxes do come with lids, so I'll just be putting a lid on top of this, but that's a really important thing that you're going to need. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning and hopefully we get some spawning. Okay, so it's now the next morning and what we're going to do is check for eggs in these containers. So I'll start off over here with our long fin leopard danios, which I think are going to be almost impossible to catch. This is genuinely like mission impossible here. It's so hard to catch. Here we go, one. There we go, got all the leopard danios out now. And then these gold danios are going to be easy as to get out. Just take the basket out and we'll tip them all in. Cool. What we can do is go and check for eggs. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed all the rocks from here and I've obviously removed the spawning basket from this container here. Now I've had a look in here and there's definitely eggs in here. I've seen a few. I've looked in here. I actually don't see any at all. We'll probably find out in the next couple of days whether we see like wrigglers in here. But at the moment I haven't seen any eggs. That's just because they're very, very hard to see. Hopefully there are a few in there. The reason that there wouldn't be any in here is they possibly ate them all. We're definitely gonna see a much smaller yield in here, I think, than we are in this container, but they're gonna be almost impossible to see, so you'll have to really bear with me here. In the middle of the screen there, there's some like really kind of transparent silhouettes. Those would be eggs. I'm gonna try and remove a few and record them, but tomorrow morning when they start to hatch, or the next couple of days when they start to hatch, we'll really start to see how many there are in here because what'll happen is 
they'll actually start coming up the sides here and sticking to the sides and that's going to be a really good indicator of how many there are in here. At the moment there's not really anything we can do to see any more eggs. So there's definitely eggs in here. As for this container I'm not too sure. Hopefully we get a few but at least you're going to get to compare the two methods and see obviously we're going to have a much bigger yield in here using uh, you know slightly more materials than in here. We might only get a few Danios in here to be honest. So. What I'm going to do is go ahead, add the parents back to their tank, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow when the eggs start to hatch. Alright, so it's now the following day, and the eggs that we got yesterday are all doing really good. I haven't seen many in the Longfin Leopard Danio container, and I'm not too sure if there's actually eggs in there. They've definitely spawned, but I think they might have eaten all the eggs. But in our Gold Danio container, I saw plenty in there, and the eggs have all started to develop. So. If you have a look in here, you can see that some of these Danios are already plump and ready to go again. So what I'm going to do is, I've gotten a little bit greedy here, but I wanted to do this experiment for a little while. And what I'm going to be doing is actually mixing these two Danios together, so the Longfin Leopards and the Gold Danios, to see what kind of fry we get. Now, we're not going to see the results of the fry in this video, like we're not going to see what kind of fry we got from mixing these two together. but in a future video, I will be updating you on this batch. So we're gonna take both groups of five and mix them together in the same container. Let them breed and see whether we get any really cool fish. So to do this, I've got another container here. This is just another styrofoam box. This one is a little bit more flat, but it should do a really good job. So what I've done here is I'm gonna try another method. We're gonna use the box again, but instead of like drilling screws into the side like this one, what I've done is I've literally just put like four rocks down the bottom and these are going to act as a platform for this. So this thing actually sinks. And what we're going to do is just let this thing sink. The rocks are going to keep it above the ground floor so the eggs can fall through and there's a layer protecting them from the parents. And we'll see how many eggs we get from these Danios. So I'll go ahead and fill this up and we'll add all the Danios and see if they breed in the morning. Alrighty, so it's now the next morning, we're gonna go check and see whether we have any eggs with these Danios. So, we'll have a look in here. So it does seem like a lot of these Danios are a little bit skinnier, so that means they've probably laid quite a few eggs. What I'm gonna do is just simply grab out this rock and this cocoa fiber. Put that over here. I think simply we'll just lift these guys out of here. How the hell are there fish in here? So I just went ahead and grabbed out those Danios that were in the outside compartment of this container. I'm not too sure how long they've been there and I don't know whether they've eaten all of our eggs. I guess we're gonna have to find out, but we're gonna take these Danios out, as you can see, and we're just gonna go and drop them in this. In here, it's gonna be a little bit hard. One sec. So we've just put these guys back in their breeding tank. Now, if we come over here, if we have a look in here, there are actually quite a few eggs and they're going to be really hard to see for you guys, but I've seen quite a few in here and I think that we're going to have some hatch. I'm not too sure whether the Danios escaped like a couple of minutes ago or if they've been in here all night. If they've been in here all night, they would have decimated the eggs in here, but we're going to have to wait and see whether they have. It's pretty annoying, but good thing this wasn't our focus batch. If you come on over to our original gold Danio spawn, you'll see that we have a ton of little embryos all throughout this box. So you can see all those little dots there. Those are actually the spines of the fish inside of the egg. And there are so many in here. As for the leopard danio container, I haven't really seen many embryos. So hopefully we get a few in here, but for the most part, this method did not work as well as I'd like. I guess we'll wait and see what happens with this container, whether we actually do get many eggs. We'll wait for these guys to hatch probably tomorrow and we'll see whether we start having any fry turn up in here. So it's now been another day, and if we have a look in our main container with the gold Danio fry, you'll see that some of these embryos have really started to form, so you can see them pretty well. But I've also noticed around this container, we actually have some hatchlings. So if we come and have a look in the corner over here, you can see we have one of our little baby Danios. So there's one there, 
and these guys have really just started to hatch within the last hour. It's pretty cool to see this all happening. You can see just how many little embryos there are on the bottom of this container though. So we're gonna have hundreds of little Danios swimming around. Over in this container with the gold crossed leopards, we do have quite a few eggs, but some of them aren't fertilized. But I've also decided to do another batch of these because our rock method did not work very well. So over in this container, we used to have the rocks in there. We tried out that method. It looks like all the leopard Danios ate all those eggs. So what I've done is I've just taken that apart and I'm gonna do another batch of gold cross leopards in here. So you can see them all swimming around down the bottom there. For that to work, you're gonna need way more rocks. And in my opinion, it's just not worth really doing it that method. I try it with the basket instead. It works a ton better. Like you can see just in here, really the results. I'll catch up with you guys later once I start free swimming and I'll show you guys exactly how to raise them up. So it's now another day later. And if we look into our little gold Danio container, we've actually got little tiny baby fry. They are seriously small, like they're very, very hard to see. And we're going to feed these guys today. So to feed them, we're going to need a very tiny food because these are very tiny fry. I mean, they're really small. Ideally, I'd be feeding Infusoria, but to keep this project as simple as possible, we're going to be feeding these guys some boiled egg yolks. So I've talked about this in previous videos. Basically, what you're going to want to do is hard boil an egg, take that yolk out of the middle of the egg, and crumble it up in some tank water. Nothing too special here, just like this cloudy water. And what we're gonna do is feed this to the little Danios that's come in here. And we're just gonna squeeze this over the surface of the water and disperse it throughout the whole container. We don't wanna overfeed this stuff because it is gonna pollute our water. And we're gonna do this two to three times a day. You'll see these guys will start to grow really quick. You see down the bottom here, there's little like clumps of eggs. So you don't want to feed that. You just want to feed the milk because those clumps are just going to rot. No one's going to eat that. And then we're going to start feeding some baby brine shrimp and trying to raise these guys up properly. This is the most important step. Another thing I like to add to all of these containers is some java moss because this is just a live plant and this is going to help keep the little box cycled a little bit better. It helps like to deal with the waste and it also has a bunch of infusoria on it. And it's a great spot for little fry to go and hide in. So. We're going to add that as well and that's basically it. So we're going to feed these guys as many times as we can with this egg yolk. Very simple, not too hard to do. In a few days time these guys will start eating some bigger foods and we'll get them into a grow out tank but very easy. So it's now another couple of days later and I wanted to update you guys on what's happening with this Danio breeding. So there is so many fry that I've accidentally made and it might slowly start to become a problem in the future. I'm not gonna have any problems selling these guys because they are a really popular fish. So I'll be able to take them to like a wholesaler and just really flog them off. If you come on down here to the gold Danio container, there is an unimaginable amount of fry in here. I've been a little bit too successful at raising these guys up. And I think I've raised up pretty much 100% of all the fry so far. Like I haven't had any die offs and literally all I've been doing is feeding that egg yolk twice a day and you can see them all swimming around here. I mean, everywhere you look, there's action. There's an unbelievable amount of them in here. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit crazy. So they're slow growing at this size. Once they start eating baby brine shrimp, they'll grow a little bit quicker. So these are the gold Danios. Now there's not as many in this container. Over here, we're looking at the long fins cross golds. So you can see there's quite a few fry in this corner. And same here, I've been having a very easy time raising these guys up. These are honestly such an easy fish to breed. For any beginner who wants to just get into breeding fish, if you've been breeding guppies and you want to move into something else, maybe like an egg layer, this is definitely the best thing to go towards because this is going to give you a lot of experience for a very cheap and affordable price. And honestly, you need no equipment to do this. Like it's so easy. I've got the three containers running. So I've got this container here with the long fins, this container with the golds, and I've done another cross over there with some more long fins and some golds. So, there's like 500 eggs in there. There's probably about 500 fry in here. And there's probably another good 200 fry in here. So we are gonna have a mountain of Danios very, very shortly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these guys until they start eating baby brine shrimp. And then I'll show you guys exactly what I'm gonna do to raise these guys up to adult size because a lot of the time people will just leave you at this stage and this is kind of the most important stage. You gotta get these guys all the way from this size up to adult size and that's the tricky part. So. 
It might take a few more days, but I'll come back and update you guys once I start eating some bigger foods and we can move them to a bigger tank. So it's now a few more days later and as promised, we're back and we're gonna be trying to summarize the raising of all of these fry in this last segment of the video. So what we're gonna be doing is all of these gold Danio fry here in the middle container have gotten substantially bigger and can definitely go into a grow out tank. So what I've done is this aquarium over here, I've drained as you might be able to see to about 30% full. And what we're gonna be doing is simply just adding all of these gold Danios to this tank for their final grow out. We have two sponge filters in here and the water is substantially lower. We're gonna be adding a ton of Java moss in here and we're gonna be using a very similar method to what I'm doing with my bedders as you might've seen in a previous video. Basically what we're doing is we're simulating a pond environment. So we're trying to set up like a mini pond and this makes raising the fry so much easier. So in the past I've done things like put them in small containers and try and raise them up and put them in breeder boxes and stuff like that. And in my opinion, it's really not necessary. You can get so much success so easily without having to constantly move fry around by just adding them to these big tanks with shallow depths of water. So if you don't have a tank like this, you could use like a kiddie pool or something like that. It's up to you. If you come on over here to the gold Danio container, you can see these guys have started to eat a little bit of baby brine shrimp. So I'm feeding them baby brine shrimp, micro worms, and I'm still feeding a little bit of powdered egg yolk. These guys are 100% ready to go and they're gonna be getting moved today. The other two containers here and there, we're gonna be waiting for these guys to reach a little bit of an older age. So since the last time we've seen them, they've all hatched out and they're all free swimming. So I'm raising them the exact same way. You can see there's actually about 500 of them in here. There's a crazy amount of them. And I wanna raise these guys separately so I can see the genetics between the leopards and the golds. So they're not gonna be going into this grow out tank. So let's go ahead and add these guys to the tank and I'll show you guys exactly how to set it up and how to feed them and raise them. So what we're gonna do is take this container and you have to be very gentle because you don't want these containers to crack. So I might actually do a little bit of an unconventional method here. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna siphon these guys into this tank. So I'll go ahead, take the Danios, put the container up here. I'll just grab out all this Java moss and throw it in here. And then I'm just gonna take this tube and just start siphoning them in. Okay, so I've drained most of the water and I'll just get the rest of it in there. Just pour it into a container like this. Okay, so now we've just transferred all of these guys in there. So all the Danios have been added to the tank. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a mountain of Java moss to this tank. So you can get Java moss pretty easily. Lots of people sell it. And the reason I add this is to add a lot of, firstly, plant matter. Like I've talked about earlier on in the video, it really helps out the Danios a lot. And the other thing too is this also has more critters and hiding spaces and kind of turns this shallow depth of water into a little pond. So what I do is just squeeze it to make sure anything in there is kind of like broken up and then just throw it around the tank. The reason I'm squeezing it sometimes is little dragonfly larvae in there and they'll eat the fry so I don't want them in there. Cool. This is basically it for the setup. They're gonna be fine from here. They're really gonna like this setup. What we're gonna to do to feed them and raise them up is exactly what we've been doing with them in the styrofoam containers. What we're gonna do is two or three times a day, come over the top of the aquarium and feed all, basically try and feed the whole surface of the aquarium. So come all the way up the top. I've shown this in my better video as well. You just come kind of treat it like you're mowing a lawn, come across the whole tank and feed the whole surface of the water. And then that way there's gonna be food in every single corner. From here, as long as you feed them enough food and you feed them frequently, they're gonna have a really easy time getting raised up in here. The key to raising fry in a big space is making sure there's a huge quantity of food in the water. So don't overfeed excessively, but just make sure that they are getting enough food and you won't have any problems. Okay, so it's now been a few more days since we've added the Danios to this tank. And I just wanted to wrap this project up and show you guys how they're doing. So. As you can see, there's tons of these little guys swimming around within this tank. I've since as well moved the other batches into their grow out tanks as well, but I just wanted to focus on this tank. They're starting to get their gold color. They look really good. And there are a few runs in here, but that's kind of what you would expect with any breeding project. 
other than that this has been a huge success and i'm definitely not surprised at how many we made because these fish are that easy to breed like this would definitely be a great project for any beginner and this is something that i would highly recommend to anyone who wants to get into egg laying fish so thank you so much for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it please 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 leave a like down below it helps out these videos so much and i'll see you guys in the next one